How the fuck? Okay, so you fucking obviously you take this shit off by yeah. like, you know, makeup wipes. How the hell? <laughs> you know, I that one. That up. Yeah. I just drink a lot and then it just goes away. Is that really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that basically it? It just dissipates with uh, semen and water. Oh, okay. This look, this, <laughs> this. I wish you could see what this looks like, Svetka. This looks like I'm like watching my. Son, it's fucking weird. <laughs> Don't dude. talk to me or my son ever again. Like, no, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah take... What's the Team Rocket quote? Like, we've got trouble and make it double? Yes. All right, I'm going to ask you some questions and uh, give me as short of a response as you would like. Mm. All right. I mean, as best you can. Do you view what happened to you in terms of social media as a blessing or as a curse? Yes. <laughs> yes to which? You said as short as possible. No, I... Blessing? Slash curse? Okay. I'd say blessing in the sense that I appreciate that I make a difference now, and I like that, and I appreciate that, and that's what I've always wanted. Curse, because sometimes you get recognized in public, and people don't know how to fucking treat you. And they think that you're an object. They'll take photos of you at a movie theater. And then and they'll fucking forget that their fucking flash was on while you're watching Jurassic World. Which is a really shitty movie. That's okay. It's mediocre. But yeah, you, it, it's like that. That sucks. And especially whenever I was really anxious as a person. And you're like, I can go in public now. And I have to worry that people are going to recognize me. And the, then here's the... Yeah, there you go. But here's the thing, too, is I did not realize how how many people it would touch just like with the meme because i mean i get it like memes become really popular and most people know about them yeah but now i i never would have anticipated i don't i personally i don't like it the fact that anywhere i go it's likely that at least okay apparently the statistics as i've calculated about one in ten people will know well i have seen one of my videos yeah which is cool if you don't care about being recognized but i do because I'm like, I'm just a human. Don't you fucking treat do I don't treat me otherwise. It's like, I'm just trying to enjoy myself. Don't treat me differently. If you want to come up and say hi, say hi. But don't be like, take photos and all this shit and treat me like I'm an object. Yeah. So yeah, blessing in the sense that there are good people and I can make a difference. But cursing the fact that some people just... <sighs> I don't get it. No, I think that's a good answer. Do you think social media is good for people as a whole? No. Okay, fair <laughs> point. Do you, do you think the positives outweigh the negatives or the negatives outweigh the positives? I think it depends on the person, honestly. Because, uh, I mean, if I, had to, if I was to try to judge society as a whole from what I've seen, I would say that social media is often more toxic than it's not because, you know... Some people, and as I've talked to people about this, don't recognize the fact that social media is a still moment in it's somebody else's world. It's a life. snapshot. Yeah. I can fake the fact, like I can fake being happy just for, for a couple moment. of seconds. Yeah. Right now, if I do short form content, when I was at my absolute worst, I actually had more viral videos sometimes than whenever I was actually okay. And yeah. people, and actually. Ugh, was one time I can I can remember particularly it pissed me the fuck off, and this guy doesn't even know that you know it was a problem. Uh, I I had stopped making content for a while, mm-hmm. and I, I would only do like Snapchat every now and again because Snapchat's much easier, you know, respond to comments, whatever the fuck. And you know I, I guess this is I don't know this close, you know, I was fucking I was doing only fans at the time, and this guy was you know in charge of like essentially managing me and making sure I was keeping up with content. He's a great guy, I fucking love him to death. So I don't have anything against him. He's a fucking fantastic guy. We're probably gonna hang out next time we're in LA. But he he fell victim to what social media is. I started posting on TikTok again. I hadn't posted in months. I posted one video, and he kind of comes to me and he's like, he's a businessman. I understand. It's like, looks like you're feeling better. You know, when do you want to jump back into it? I'm like, that's one fucking video. I was like, wow. I'm miserable. I finally mustered the confidence to post one thing. I am not feeling better. That's I just finally could do the one. And that one you're video. Just trying to yes, keep I, it going. I tried to finally get back into it, but he thought that I'm better. Yeah. 
Yeah. But that's why I'm like, social media is toxic because people will fall victim to these, to these illusions. And he's a smart guy. Illusions he's, and he's, assumptions. Yeah. That yeah, and he's a really smart guy. So I would think, honestly, I don't. I think you can be as smart as you fucking want. I think I would fall victim to it. I think I, as most people are, actually, this is funny. I took, a, I took an advertising class in, in, in college. And one of the things that they said is the, the most common response that everybody gives is... I think advertising works on other people, but it doesn't work on me. It's the same concept as social media. I think that I don't fall victim to what social and media says, but everybody else does. It works on that. fucking yes. everybody. <laughs> it actually does. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good answer. I appreciate yeah. that answer. Where do you think... Yes. And this is an attachment... <laughs> God damn it. In attachment to your previous comment, um, or, or actually the previous question... Where do you think cancel culture in regards to social media comes from, specifically from an individual perspective? Because I know we talked about that outside. You yeah. Know, you have a hair on oh. your fucking... Oh, sorry, it was my hair. last one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, where do I think people come up with this idea of, like, what's cancelable and, like, why they should be canceled? Or just no, like... more, uh... What do you what do you think motivates people that participate in in cancel culture? Yes, yes. Honestly, superiority. Okay. I feel like when you, I think people search for absolute truths, uh -huh. and so when you're told in society this is wrong and you should not do this, a lot of people who are insecure like to be like, well, I can take that, and now I know this to be an absolute truth, meaning. If somebody does that, I can be so confident to tell them that they're wrong because, because I've been told this is an absolute truth. Yeah. And so they do that shit and they feel good about themselves because they're like, I learned this is wrong and you're a piece of I'm shit. I'm the sheriff now. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's basically what it is. And it's really shitty, especially oh, because, and this is one thing that I'll add too, and I'm fucking Indian. And I fuck Indians. No, I'm fucking Indian. Okay. My masterpiece. Wow. I, anyway, okay. I'm Indian. I'm a little bit. <laughs> anyway, I'm dark. I'm darker, but people don't normally tell because. Not anymore. Yeah, I look white as him. <laughs> and when I make an Indian joke or do an accent, they're like, oh, that's so fucking racist. And it's hilarious to me because it's never the Indian people who are saying that, it's always the white people. Because they're told the absolute truth is if you make jokes about another culture, that's offensive. So that's they great. defend the Indians, but the Indians will comment and be like, that's fucking hilarious. I'm an Indian and I approve. And I was like, well, I'm an Indian. You don't need your fucking approval because so am I. Yeah. But, you know, bitch. But like, Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. That's because also the same concept. People don't understand, like, all races and things. Like, they don't know that northern Indians are lighter complexion. And also that mixed races exist. So I'm Czech and Indian, which is why I'm somewhat dark, but not quite completely, but... I have family who looks Indian as fuck, who's my same skin tone, or actually lighter than I am. Do you think that's also, like, uh, this wasn't actually a question, but, like, an uh, annotation to, like, what you said about race, um, that me, my personal opinion about race is that it's come to a state in our society, and I don't know if you agree with this or if you have statements to make on my statement, that it's gotten to a point now where it's more focused on divisiveness rather than togetherness when it comes to race. Would you agree with that? Or do you have anything? Just in general, that when it comes to race, that people are trying to like divide and be like, yeah. this is my group. And I would. No, let me. I have no issues with people embracing culture right. and like where they come from. I, I think that's saying. very important. But. Uh, using race as a means to separate people. Yeah. Do you think that's become more prominent, is I guess my question. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I feel like it has. And I yeah. have a specific example that comes to mind. And this is... It's so subtle. Okay. And I feel like almost unintentional. So when I was in high school, there were these people who were... Fuck it. No. Just kidding. I'm not <laughs> racist. Only whenever it's relevant. No. <laughs> So it's these, it's these fucking Asians. It's funny because India is Asian, so it's not racist. Anyway. It was wild. it was the Filipino folk. Okay. I don't have a problem with. I was a fucking part of their friend group. So it was lots of Filipinos who were in a tennis group. I was in tennis. We'd all hang out. But the Filipino group, however, whenever it was time to hang out outside of school, they hung out with themselves. 
That was it. If you were Filipino, you were in. If you weren't, you weren't in. Okay. And that was weird to me because I'm like, we all hang out normally. You know, we play tennis together. We go over and we, we, we'll chat. We'll kick the shit. We all get along. We have a good time. And we'll go out to restaurants and we'll all laugh and have a good time. And I know you all like me and I like all of you. And it's the same thing, though, for every other person who was not Filipino on the team, which was like, you know, 10 of us versus 20 Filipinos. It's worked out that way. Yeah. It's like, why is it that it's only okay, though, to hang out outside of school if they're Filipino? And I don't think it was intentional. I just think it's this kind of like, it's, like it's, it's the mentality that, you know, you have a bond. And I think people almost think in their heads, our society is so divided, so I need to stick with my people. And by sticking with your people, you're now dividing society even yeah. more. You feel you, safe. Yeah, because you yeah you feel safe. But what you just did was you stuck to your people. You're not you're not mingling now. And this yeah. is this is also why like that's a very good point. This is also why with certain people or certain groups that like say so, yeah, I'll go semi political, but like in an understandable way, is say with something as simple as a good movement, Black Lives Matter, right? Mm. Something that everybody can agree with. Well, unless you're fucking stupid. You know, there's there's certain things that, you know, as, say, a, a white person or a half-white person that, like, you know, I don't have an issue with. I have friends who are black who've been, you know, identified or, like I said, racial profiled by cops and stuff, and I've heard horror stories about this. Mm -hmm. However, the thing is, you know, as somebody who is not African-American whatsoever, as far as I know, I haven't taken an answer to test, so, like, I don't fucking know. You can, anyway, say, you can say me. Yeah. You can say me. Yeah, but the thing is, I support the movement, right? Yet I've had people who have an issue with that. You're not black, you can't support the movement. Because you're not a part of it. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, how are you going to integrate and get what you want if you don't let somebody else who's not your race support you? Because that's with a lot of people. That's like That's the same thing with some feminist movements, but... I think a true feminist will allow a man into it, but it's also like, you know, they call third wave feminists who are like, you're a man, you can't be a feminist. And it's like, well, how I the fuck are you going to be able to, to get what you want? Well, like, it's, 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 the thing is, I don't think it's controversial. I think it's common sense. No, it's like you have to let people no, into No, I, I agree. The only reason I say I cannot wait to see the comments on this video is because uh, I feel like when you point truth at people that have categorized themselves yeah but you put them in a category that they don't they feel upset. they categorize yeah. themselves in even though they fell into that category <laughs> when it comes to self prescribing categories they get mad does that yeah. make sense yeah you it's put true. me in the category that i put the category and categorically was in that category but the label was halfway on that category no yep Basically, I think I think uh, a lot of people who are like, I guess, I think it's insecurity. Whenever they're told you are this, and it's completely true, they get very angry. Yes, because <laughs> they're like, they, you, nobody wants to feel like somebody completely understands you and like points out all your flaws, but then somebody does, and you're like, fuck. So you're so it's out. like, if you if you go to like a, a place with like a mentalist, and okay. he or she reads you. And then you get pissed off. Yeah, because you're like, that what? They know all your you're shit. Like, wait, how am I that readable? Yeah, yeah. and you get angry because you're like, no, there's no way. I'm not. I thought that I was like so smart and so you can't unpredictable. You me. Yeah, I don't know you do. Exactly, every time. I got four of these. Um, testicles. Yeah, I got four testicles. <laughs> On um, screen. Huh? On screen. No, there's this cut right, from right here. It stops right here. I'm not wearing pants. Uh, so you get the joke two and two, and it's on screen. Oh, okay. I thought you meant four to myself. All right. Did you think you would be where you are now, five years ago? Oh, fucking no. Hell no. I would have never thought in a million years that I would have been able to do it because, I mean, my logic was, I always kind of was like, you know, I feel like I've got, I've got brains to do something. I've got confidence to do something, but... I didn't know what that was, mm -hmm. and five years ago, I would have, I was still even figuring out what the hell I wanted that to be. I think I knew what I wanted it to be, and like I always wanted it to be social media because of, say, people like PewDiePie who I watched, but I didn't think it was possible for me, because okay. I thought it was so hard, but I wanted to believe it, and I like had done little things, I remember I was like, 
maybe even younger than 10, maybe a little bit older than 10, and I was making videos already on like crappy Fuji film camera, and I would just do stupid skits alone. And I would edit them on my computer. I wouldn't upload them anywhere. I just like, this is funny. I used to honestly, it was. <laughs> I should like cassette. Oh, yeah, there you go. Your fucking little, cassette. Little yeah. fucking plays on cassette to myself. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that shit was great. And then, you know, I never would have expected it. And I'm glad to see that it's here. And though I feel like the only reason why it's here now is because I saw people do it. Like PewDiePie, I saw him do it. But I told my girlfriend at the time, actually... Whenever I was starting to do it, I had that mm. first viral video, I said, and it's only because somebody with alopecia had talked to me and I convinced him, it's to, like he's like, I want to take off my wig or my fake eyebrows and my hat, but I can't. I convinced him to do it. A, a week later, he comes back to me. I fucking did it. Thank you so much. I'm like, it's great. It's amazing. It made me fucking cry. And then I said to her, I was like, yo, this one video is traction. This is what, this is what I've always wanted, wanted to do as a person yeah. is help people with alopecia and help people in general to grow their confidence. And I said, you know what? And I'm going to turn this one video into fucking success, and it's going to fucking happen because I said it's going to happen. And I was that confident that day. And then I fucking did it. So but I only feel like it was because I worked with the intention of, like, it's it's kind of like what I've heard, uh, say, the Coen brothers who do film. Yeah. Really successful. It's They talk about this in one of these books that I read. It was, like, um, fucking my first film. It's, like, 20 different people talking about their first film. And they talked about how it's like this stupid tunnel vision that you have. The odds are all against you. They you totally are. They right, totally but... are. And you probably, you have a higher probability of like totally fucking it up. Mm. But you don't look at that. You keep going and you're like, that's the goal and I'm going to do that. And only because you have that stupid tunnel vision that's ignorant of the world that you can't do it. Which is weird because it's, it's genuine. No, yeah, 100%. Fuck you. <laughs> My follow-up to that is, where do you want to be in five years from now? I know ideally what I'd like, and I kind of wonder, but it's it's almost like, you know, I wouldn't have expected what I have now to happen, so I I could only imagine what's going to happen in five years. So uh, the Naked Confidence Campaign, which is my organization, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about helping people with alopecia get confidence. And we talked about this. We've all talked about this. Like, I have a right-hand man. His name's Stephanie. He's fucking great. And we're like, okay, we'd like to expand this beyond alopecia, right? Mm -hmm. Because the the message of, you know, your aesthetics don't matter, it's who you are that does, is not exclusive. Mm -hmm. So people with alopecia, it goes to anybody, you know, a bit of LIGO, you know, you're missing an arm, maybe you don't like the way your nose looks, maybe you just literally are just insecure, period, and everything's fucking fine with you, but you're insecure. Mm -hmm. That message of confidence and the training of confidence, I feel like, is so important, so I'd like for that to grow. Like for that to be a genuine nonprofit, and I'd like for more people to be a part of it and expand beyond alopecia. That's going to take some time, of course. But I had a plan of something that was like really big, but this is like the next like 15, 20 years. What I thought was really awesome, and this is just like you know spitting shit, and I probably will do it in due time. It was this uh, the thought, and I know it's it's growing in popularity too. Um, you know, college, college is the thing, yeah. the thing that exists. And it's fucking stupid. Yes, it is. And here's the thing. It's stupid depending on what it is that you want to do. If you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, go to fucking college. Because I don't want a doctor having like two years of experience to fucking give me heart surgery. It makes perfect sense. However. They write so yeah. good though. <laughs> Sorry. If you want if you want to do anything else, you want to be an artist, you want to be an English major, you want to be whatever the fuck. Get but it doesn't but it doesn't require Get what? Your DZ. Yeah. Anyway, fucking go. Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. So what I thought, I was like, okay. Let's say, for example, because college is a fucking monopoly. Yeah. At this point, there's there's so much it just puts go, you in debt going into that shit, you know, you get that, it's horrible. I was like, what if there was a program that wasn't expensive as fuck. And was geared towards... And was geared towards, well, you know, artistic, but also just the fact that it should be one year focused solely on what you want, and it's intensive, and there's that year, and you're fucking done. You can accomplish because, a lot. Because why yeah. the hell are there two years that are dedicated to, you know, prereqs that have nothing to do with your fucking major? It's just a cash grab. It's that's yeah. all the fuck is. If you don't notice, if you don't know that, you're fucking stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> the only, the only. I mean, I think that's a fantastic idea. I think the only issue you could come into, or uh, 
come across with that is finding, uh, being able to make it so it's accredited. That's yeah, it. Well, that's actually, because they would, they would fight you. Yeah, that's actually what I have, I've talked about before. Is, but I'm glad you bring that up too because this is what I kind of thought about. I had, I've had a couple of, I guess, celebrities. Uh -huh. I won't disclose who. Who supported the idea of it, who wanted to back it because they also believed in that. And what I thought to myself, and this is something I presented that seems, you know, relatively relevant, is you have, what I wanted to do is say the first class of that school would be I'd go to a bunch of different communities, a bunch of different schools, and bring on whoever was, like, I think it was, what were the classes? It was um, musicians, uh, actors, social media content creators, entrepreneurs, and English majors were the first, like, five subjects. You have elite teachers come on board for the first year. Yeah. They're going to do great. The point is, we're gonna, I was actually going to have that school funded by a separate event with other celebrities, and that was kind of in the works. But then I got depressed as fuck, so <laughs> I can do it again. I don't know if I can go from there. I, but anyway, I think it's a, a really good idea. But, you know, you do that, but whenever you have the first class, you have great teachers. And eventually, they, these people will then go on to perform well because they're great people. You pick the best of the best, but you also make sure that these people are from different, you know, diverse backgrounds. Like, it's not super expensive, like rich motherfuckers. Well. It's like people who just are talented. It can be from the shittiest school in the yeah. entire world, but they're great people. Bring them on board. You Doesn't say, your, your first year is free. You know, come over here, learn your shit, and you go. And then people are going to be like, yo, the people from this fucking school are amazing. Like, I just hired somebody as a social media content creator to do, like, our social media, that and they're fucking point. amazing. And then, like, that first year and those first people, when they go out and do their shit, it's like the reputation there is going to show. But the point is you have teachers that are qualified enough to make that happen and students who are ready to learn. I will counter my original with uh, you'll have trouble finding accreditation. I think uh, if, if you, like with what you were just saying, if you just follow through regardless of, if you just created the program, enough people would flock to the program organically. And then if you continued with it, you would most likely, with the proper backing obviously of course, I, I think you'd be able to reach accreditation with no problem. Yeah, eventually. Because they would start to see. I get, I get where you're going with, with the, the end product being people that are of high caliber, regardless of the mm -hmm. background or where they came from. So I think that's, yeah. a, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think it'd be great, and I think the re the only reason why I think it's even possible nowadays is because people are starting to realize that you don't need college to be successful. I mean, I I got my associate's degree, and then I was like, social media is picking up. I got my GED. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, fucking. That's the thing. It's like the same concept. You fucking. I was like, you know what? Uh, no, I'm gonna focus on this thing because I like this thing and I actually care about this thing, and yeah. so I'm gonna work a million times harder because I actually love it. No, absolutely. I think that's yeah, fuck very that. important. All right. So, last two questions. There's a question, and then there is a follow-up question to uh, the first question. No, it's not cancer. No, let's just stop. Jesus. Okay. Uh, and this is, this is genuine, and, uh, well, actually, I, I guess technically it's three. Are you happy? Yeah. I'm now. actually, I'm stealing that from a TikTok. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a, there's a TikTok, uh, profile that goes around and asks people. Like, yeah. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I think I've seen them before, and there's actually a guy, a friend of mine who does kind of something similar. Yeah. If you'd asked me that question maybe four weeks ago, I would tell you no. In I, short, why are you happy? <laughs> I would say I'm happy because I like what I do. I enjoy, like for example, let's say you, you know, is over there. I don't know if I can say your fucking name. Anyway, anyway I got, yeah, Speka. I got great people who are around me. I've got great friends, great family who love and support me. I enjoy the fact that I'm in the career that I am. And I mean, honestly, it, what it comes down to is that it's actually, there's a show called Fleabag. I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's also, it became a play. But one of the quotes from it was, you know, people are all we got, which I think is such a valid point. I mean, you were telling me earlier that you like relationships and good conversations and shit like that. Yeah. But it's like the relationships are what are most important. So the fact that I wake up and I enjoy what I do and I have good relationships, that's it. I could give fuck all about the money, fuck all about the fame. Do I like the people that I'm surrounded with, and do I like what I do? And if that's what you have, that's fucking golden. That's a good answer. I like that. Let me. 
Last question. If you had one message for the entirety of the world, what would it be? Go fuck yourself. No. (laughs) (laughs) I had to do that. It's too easy. It was too easy. We can go with go fuck yourself. We can can cut it right there. I have, okay, that definitely has to be included, but... Mm. I know that's a hard Actually, one. no. I I I know what it is because it was like the deepest thought I'd ever had. So, this is what I believe. Everybody in their life has, at one point or another, explored the question, "What is the purpose of human existence?" And here's the thing: if you look externally for this thing, you will never. You know, what I mean, never. You will find the fucking answer. It's the same concept if you try to look for validation outside of yourself, you will never find the answer. It's all about looking inward. So, if you want to ask the question, what is the purpose of existence? It's not up to the world to define that, it's up to you to define that. And the moment that you decide what your own purpose is, then you can actually fulfill it and you'll live a fulfilling, satisfying life. But you can't leave it up to anybody else. You have to decide, not your parents, not your uncles and aunts, not your grandparents, not your girlfriend, not your brother, your sister, not your fucking dog, I don't know, your pet rock. You need to decide for yourself. That's what I did for myself. It's made me happy. So only you can decide your purpose. And if you don't fucking fulfill that, then then. Well, that's on you. But don't be living a fucking limbo, just being like, what is my purpose? Decide what the fuck it is. It might take some time to do it. I agree with that. If I, if I may, I'll make uh, an annotation to that. That's something that I heard today that I think was very important that I want to share with as many people as possible. So I'll share it with you and anybody who's watching. Today was the tomorrow that you feared, which really fucking uh, spoke to me. Hmm. Because yesterday... You are so worried about the next day, but you made it to that next day. So now, today is the tomorrow that you feared. So, that's it. And then it keeps going, yeah. Yeah, Mm. yeah, you can follow that cycle as far as it will take you. So, thank you for joining us. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Nico. I'm Sam. You mean we're both Sam. We're both Sam. We're both Sam. <laughs> Can't see me. John Cena. John Stamos. Everywhere you look. Have everywhere. a good one. Oh, that's copyrighted. <laughs> Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye.